Picture this. You're standing in the middle of a frozen forest. The wind howls like a living thing. The snow beneath your boots crunches, but each step sinks you deeper into a world of ice. The temperature is so low that if you stopped moving, if you made even one bad decision, you might not make it through the night. Now imagine surviving this, not for one night, but for an entire winter, and doing it without modern jackets, insulated boots, or four walls of a heated cabin. That's exactly what Native Americans did for centuries. Families lived through winters that could freeze the unprepared in hours, and they did it using methods that most people today wouldn't even think to try. Today, we're uncovering seven survival systems that kept Native Americans alive in winters so brutal they would kill most modern people in a single night. Survival began before the snow even fell. It started with a decision so important that everything else depended on it, where to set up camp. For Native Americans, location wasn't just convenience. It was literally life or death. Wind was the enemy. Open plains could become frozen death zones where gusts cut through hides and fire like knives. That's why tribes sought out wind-sheltered areas. Tree lines, for example, acted like massive natural walls. They blocked the worst of the winds, creating calmer pockets where temperatures could be several degrees warmer than in exposed spaces just a short distance away. Cliffs and rocky outcrops offered similar protection but they also brought a hidden bonus. Stone surfaces absorb daytime sunlight and release that heat slowly through the night. Set up a teepee against the right rock face and it became like having a giant natural radiator behind you. Even small differences in elevation mattered. Low valleys could trap frost in colder air, making them dangerous frost pockets. But just 10 or 15 feet higher on a slope, the air stayed warmer and safer. Native tribes knew this from generations of experience. Resources mattered too. A campsite wasn't chosen just for shelter. It had to provide the essentials. Water. Close enough to fetch easily, but not so close that flooding or ice posed danger. Melting snow all winter wasted too much precious fuel. Firewood. Non-negotiable. No fuel meant no survival. A site needed enough fallen branches and dead trees to last through storms. Food. Game trails nearby brought opportunities for hunting, but they also brought risk because predators followed those same trails. Choosing a winter camp was like balancing survival math. Too far from water and you wasted time and fuel. Too close to predators and your family might become food. The perfect spot was rare, but when found, it meant the difference between thriving and freezing. Once camp was chosen, the next step was creating heat. But here's where things get fascinating. Native Americans built fires inside their teepees. At first glance, that sounds insane. A fire inside a fabric shelter? Like cooking dinner inside a paper bag. But this was not reckless. It was carefully engineered. The fire pit sat in the exact center of the teepee, shallow, about six inches deep. That shallow pit encouraged upward airflow, preventing heat from getting trapped at ground level. Above, smoke flaps at the very top of the teepee worked like adjustable chimneys. Open one side, close the other, and you could redirect smoke based on wind direction. Side vents near the bottom let oxygen in without turning the whole tent into a freezer. Together, these created a perfect airflow system. Oxygen in at the base, smoke out at the top, warmth spreading through the middle. Fire management became an art form. Wood had to be perfectly dry. Wet or green wood would choke the teepee with smoke. Fires were built in vertical cone shapes that burned hotter and cleaner. And there was always a fire tender an adult who stayed awake through the night, adjusting flames, managing wood, and keeping sparks contained. Their role was as important as any modern heating system because one mistake could mean either suffocation or freezing. Think about that for a moment. Every single night, someone in the family acted as a human thermostat. No sleep, just vigilance. Because fire wasn't just warmth, 
it was survival. But while fire fought the air, another enemy crept up from below, the frozen ground. Lie down on bare earth in winter, and your body heat gets sucked away faster than the fire can replace it. That's why Native Americans mastered ground insulation. The first layer was often woven willow mats, tightly bound to create air pockets. On top of that, thick layers of dry grass acted as natural insulation. Then came the hides and furs. Buffalo hides were prized, fur side up to trap body heat, leather side down to block drafts. Some tribes went further. They built compacted soil beds by removing the top layer of earth and pressing the subsoil hard until it held heat. During the day, the sun and fire warmed it. At night, it slowly radiated warmth back. Beds weren't flat either. They were shaped like shallow nests, curved depressions that cradled the body and trapped warm air around it. Sleeping was more than rest. It was careful thermal engineering. Now here's where survival became personal. Native Americans didn't just rely on external heat. They turned their own bodies into furnaces. Before bed, adults often did light exercises, enough to raise their core temperature, but not enough to sweat. Sweat was dangerous because moisture against the skin could freeze later. The goal was to preheat the body so it carried warmth into the sleeping hours. Clothing layers were designed for function. Base layers of soft processed hide kept skin dry. Middle furs trapped warm air. Outer hides blocked wind and locked heat inside. And family arrangements turned survival into strategy. Parents slept on the outside, children and elders on the inside. Adults acted like human heaters, their higher body heat radiating inward. In the dark of a teepee, a family wasn't just resting. They were working together as a living insulation system, making sure no one froze. But what about when the cold became extreme, when layers, bedding, and fire still weren't enough? That's when tribes turned to an ancient secret, animal fat and ash. Buffalo tallow, bear fat, or deer fat was rendered into a thick substance that could be spread directly on the skin. It created a waterproof, windproof layer that trapped heat at the skin level. For extra protection, they mixed the fat with fine ash from hardwood fires. The ash particles absorbed heat and blocked wind. The result looked like war paint, but it was more than that. It was life-saving skin armor. Different fats had different uses. Bear fat lasted longest. Deer fat was softer, better for children. Bird fat was lighter and ideal for delicate areas like the face. This wasn't primitive superstition. It was science. They were building thermal barriers long before words like insulation or moisturizer even existed. Of course, not everyone could handle the cold equally. Children and elders were the most vulnerable. Their bodies simply couldn't generate as much heat. That's why tribes developed special systems just for them. Children and elders got the warmest spots closest to the fire. They were wrapped in extra hides, sometimes four, five, even six layers deep. Heated stones were wrapped and placed near their feet, backs, or stomachs like primitive hot water bottles. Adults often slept around them, forming protective walls of warmth and shielding them from drafts. Nighttime checks were constant. Adults monitored breathing, skin temperature, and signs of frostbite. If a child stirred, someone was there to reposition blankets, check fire, or adjust bedding. It wasn't just survival. It was community in its most powerful form. Every member of the family played a role. But even warmth and protection weren't the only threats. Winter was harsh, not just for humans, but for animals, too. Hungry predators, wolves, mountain lions, even bears were desperate in winter, and a warm teepee full of food smelled like an invitation. The first line of defense? Dogs. These weren't just companions, they were trained guardians. From puppyhood, they learned to recognize threats and signal them. A different bark or body movement might mean wolf pack versus bear. 
weapons were kept within arm's reach inside the TP, bows, spears, knives, so adults could respond instantly. And snow itself was shaped into barriers, forcing predators into predictable paths where they could be fought off more easily. Survival wasn't just about enduring the cold. It was about living in balance with a winter ecosystem filled with dangers. When you picture a teepee, it might look simple. A frame of poles, a skin covering, a small fire in the middle. But what you're really seeing is a masterpiece of survival engineering. Camps chosen with surgical precision. Fires managed with airflow physics. Bedding designed like natural insulation. Body heat turned into a shared furnace. Skin protected with animal fat and ash. Families arranged alike living survival systems. And guardians standing watch against predators. Every single detail was intentional. Every choice was based on generations of knowledge. And the result? Families survived and thrived through winters that could kill the unprepared in just a single night. Native Americans didn't just survive the cold, they mastered it. And maybe, in their wisdom, there are lessons that could still save us today.